way to the stand, but there's pigs there already, so we weren't exactly late. The feeder hasn't even gone off yet, but we're actually making pretty good time. We walked up and realized, looky there. <laughs> so uh, we're going to slip in here, keep the brush in between us and them, see what we can make happen. As I jump in here, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Marley and Joey and Beto and all the guys that made this weekend possible. Nick, um, everyone that made this weekend possible for shooting some javelinas and uh, putting us on javelinas and hogs. Um, Ethan and I from New Divide Outdoors had a fantastic time. And if you guys want to go and check out his social media, please do so down below. Also, Beto, um, his Instagram and his social media will be down in the description below as well. And also, um, Triple Threat Outdoors. Um, I highly recommend that you guys go check all of their social media out and give them a follow. And we had an absolute blast this weekend. Um, <laughs> I wanted to talk just for a minute about what happened to me um, in the first morning of our hunt, Saturday morning. Um, so we, we got up super early, about 4.15, 4.30, and we made a run for the ranch, and we had to drop off Ethan and Marley so they could get to their stand and hunt. Um, and then we, me and Joey, is, is we, we go and we hunt another stand. Well, on our way, the sun is just barely peeking up. And I'm, I look out there, and me and Joey are both like, what's that dark thing underneath the feeder? And we're like, oh, it's a pig. We're late. <laughs> I mean, we thought we were going to be early, but we had actually ended up um, just a, a touch late. The feeder hadn't even gone off, actually. So I ended up having to take a shot at about 43 or so yards. As she was headed out, um, she came to basically a, a slow walk after she got away from the feeder for a minute. And I drew back. I knew my range and I let the arrow fly. And I heard the thud, everything sounded sounded good, everything from my point of view looked good. So unfortunately enough, I didn't get the actual shot on video, um, so I didn't know 100% where I had hit her, and I had really good blood on the ground for like the first probably 40 or 50 yards. I thought for sure, like, oh, you know, I, I double lunged her, it was great. So we tracked, just Joey and myself, we tracked this hog for, uh, I'd say at least an hour and we weren't really making a whole lot of progress for those of you that are familiar with the south texas brush especially in the laredo area or just anywhere in general actually in south texas it's some nasty stuff and it takes you a little while to navigate well as we were pushing through there was um really good blood and we ended up coming up on a pool you know about this big where we could see where that sow had laid over on her side and was uh, more than likely bedding there to die now what ended up happening was we bumped her 100% that's that's exactly what happened um, and we we gave her you know like a normal amount of time probably close to 30 minutes and that's pretty typical pretty usual for me whenever I, I see good lung blood um, in the first uh, probably 15 20 feet of tracking an animal um, if I see good lung blood or I can tell that the animal's been heart shot then I'll give it about 15 20 minutes and then I'll take off and go um, or you know 30 minutes or whatever how marginal the shot was depends on how much time I give the animal and I felt really confident in that shot so um, we went ahead and went up in there well the final result was that we didn't find the hog and the reason why we didn't find the hog is because like I said we bumped her and whenever she's laid over in the sand and um, the sand clotted up 
uh, for sure that one side. Whichever side she was bleeding out of the best apparently was the side that got clotted up. Unless she laid over on both sides because the blood literally went to uh, like pin drops. <clears throat> and I tracked it uh, about 160 yards into the brush and we never ended up finding her. So um, the blood just completely quit altogether. And so we, Joey and I backed out, gave her another hour and we stopped at the last place that we had found blood. Um, an hour goes by, we pick up Ethan and we pick up Marley and we head back into the brush and we spend at least another hour, maybe hour and a half looking for this sow. And I went all the way back to the last spot that I found blood, started picking up on things. And I was like, man, I, I can't find, like I can't find anything, which of course, you know, in the sand, you don't really have a whole lot of time. But um, we, we spread out and just kind of did a, an area search and never could come up with her. Um, and you know, I, it stinks, it really does. I hate losing animals, you win some, you lose some. But uh, backing up just a little bit, um, as soon as I shot that sow, as they were kind of heading out, um, probably two minutes later, the feeder goes off and three more hogs run in. So at this point, you know, they're standing underneath a, a feeder that's a 41, 42 yard shot. I draw back and I feel, I feel comfortable. You know, I'm feeling pretty good. And I let the arrow fly and it misses like, I don't know, this much. I mean, six or eight inches underneath its belly. And I'm like, how, like 40 yards is, that's that's good for me you know I, I feel confident in my equipment and my ability to shoot and I practice and so it's like how did I just flat out miss that shot at 40 yards and <laughs> this is kind of the whole point of where I'm going here um I want to throw this tip in for you guys and I'm sure a lot of you do it but it's something that I had to be reminded of the hard way now let me grab my bow here so <laughs> at first I thought well, maybe I just dropped my shoulder and maybe I just flat out made a bad shot because I'm, I'm human and I'm imperfect and I make bad shots. And speaking of, um, one of the things that I do as an imperfect human is um, I don't, oh, I'm not always patient and I don't always wait for the, for the right things to come into my life at the right time. I try to force things, right? So t today, um, as we go through the verse of the day, it comes from Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, and it says, The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. I have a hard time sometimes, uh, depending on what aspect of my life it is, with just staying calm. Like, it's hard for me to wait. It's a very difficult thing to do for many, for many people on this earth, I'm afraid. But it's such a, a calming and great feeling knowing that the God that I serve and that many of us serve will fight for us. We're not here on this earth to do it alone. And so I wanted to hit you guys with the verse of the day right now. I'm very thankful for this one. This one spoke to me uh, tremendously this morning whenever I read it. But back into what I was saying here, I just thought to myself, maybe I just flat out made a bad shot. So I let it go <laughs> and let just let it be what it was. And that afternoon, we go back out. And we set up the block, and we were shooting a little bit, and it was super windy. And I let my first arrow fly, and I hit like a foot low at 20 yards. I'm like, okay, <laughs> something is terribly, terribly wrong here. So, so I start looking, and I look at the face of my sight just like this, and I can see the whole thing's kind of like tilted off to the side. And I'm like, huh, that's definitely not normal. So I adjust it back down, and I get it sh you know, pretty well and straight. And then I look right here on the face of this sight. So, and hopefully it's not too difficult for you guys to see. Hopefully it'll focus. So the the sight, the actual scope itself is secured, um, as far as I know, with just these two bolts, one on top, one on bottom. Well, I looked and I was completely missing the one on bottom. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is great. This is actually really, really bad. So what I ended up doing, and this is kind of where I was going in a long roundabout way, was right here, I keep this box with me. It goes on the road with me. Everywhere I go, this box goes. And what it is, is, of course, I always have tools that I take with me as well, but I have lots of Allen wrenches, and if I get some of those out of the way, you guys can see all these different size bolts and, and different things. Fortunately enough, I had a bolt that fit my sight right here, so I was able to put it back together, and again, fortunately enough, my bow was right back on and ready to go. Just needed those two screws. Now what I do here with this box is I keep um, up here in this top section, I keep all kinds of extra broadheads. Like here's some some muzzy like 215 or 225 grain broadheads. There's a couple of those in there. Um, there's a Montec. There's a 
buzz cut, there's a ram cat, there's a name that I'm not going to mention. Um, there is a, uh, whatchamacallit, this? I can't remember. Somebody will know. <laughs> Just all kinds of stuff. Uh, field tips, 100 grain, 125 grain. There's another broadhead of a name I'm not going to mention. Um, bow wax. A uh, little torch here for working on stuff, knocks, inserts, just basically everything that um, could that I could possibly need for my sight or uh, my bow in general, and then all of my arrow stuff here. And even when I went to Africa, I took this box with me, which was a huge lifesaver for me because I ended up having bow problems while I was in Africa, and I had everything here that I needed to fix it. So if you guys, um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you keep a tackle box and you keep stuff in it. If you don't and you travel a lot and, and you go hunting and you don't have any sort of immediate access to tools and things that could get you out of a bind, I highly recommend keeping a tackle box with you. Now, with all that being said, didn't find the first hog, missed the second one. Well, now, let's um, let's fast forward over to Sunday. It was a good one, for sure. Sunday morning hunt was great. Um, all around had a great great weekend we put the one heavily on the ground um, but we got to I got to meet some guys I got to meet Beto which you guys will be seeing him in an upcoming video here very soon we've actually uh, booked some hunts together and we have some clients that we've worked um, on together and so I'm excited for you guys to get to see more Beto uh, Marley will be there as well so I'm excited for you get for you guys to get to see more of them and uh, you will for sure get to see more of Ethan in upcoming videos as well um, I didn't do a whole lot of uh, camera in the face and you know vlog style video in this particular episode just because 
Um, I knew that we were going to be doing a lot of spot and stalking, and I didn't really have a whole lot of time for that kind of thing. But you guys will get to see more of them in some upcoming videos, and I'm excited for it. So be sure, once again, that you go and check all their social medias out. That's all down in the description below. Be sure that you also subscribe to this channel, and leave me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. This is my second time with Triple Threat and, and uh, the Laredo area hunting javelinas, and it's been an absolute blast both times. Super great guys, and I really appreciate their hospitality. So uh, be sure to check them out once again, and... Hopefully, it'll be something that we do annually or biannually where we get to go down there and hang out with those guys. And then also, that hopefully, they'll get to come up here and do some stuff with us as well. So, appreciate each and every one of you watching. Once again, I hope y'all enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in just a few days. I have had the devil's hand, felt the weight of my own sin, burdened by the heart of man, down to the river, down to the river.